All right, fantastic. Let's get this show on the road. Thank you for being here this morning. Ah, welcome to your mat. Welcome to your practice. Welcome to your yoga community. It may have changed a little bit over the last couple of weeks, but that's okay. Hopefully uh, you are feeling um, a little bit more connected, even though we're meeting virtually. I know it, it does a lot for me. Um, so thank you so much for being here. I, I really appreciate it. So today in our practice, we're going to be working with the sacral chakra. Last week, we worked a little bit with the root. So we're going to move up the, um, the chakra system and um, work with the second chakra, the sacral chakra. So um, we'll be focusing a lot on the hips today, a lot of hip openers. As always, even though we usually have a focus for our practice, I usually throw in a little bit of everything just to do um, some total body as well. So we'll probably hit some other places as we move through our practice. So um, you don't have to grab it now, but if you ever want to work on uh, balancing the sacral chakra at another time, you can um, use color and scent and I love rocks so I brought a um, a carnelian with me today I don't know if you can see it we're kind of far away but um, maybe at the end of the video I'll, I'll hold it closer but it's a more of an orangish reddish color more orange um, stone so I've got that with me and the scent I'm using today is wild orange um, I use doTERRA products so you can it's safe to put those directly on your skin so you can do that or you can have it in a, a little water, <clears throat> excuse me, diffuser like I've got here. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll talk more about uh, hip opening and the sacral chakra as we move through practice today. And today I'm going to invite us to start in a laying down position. So if you um, would like a blanket, maybe underneath the knees, that would be awesome. You can grab that. The invitation, um, we've got lots of options for our practice as always. So the first option is to just come into a Shavasana with the legs extended. Um, the second option is the one that I'm gonna choose. It's more of a hip opener, bringing the bottoms of the feet together in Supta Baddha Konasana. So laying down butterfly pose. And we're very early in our practice, obviously. This can be a tender part of the body. So we might want to take some bricks if we have them or some books and slide it underneath the thighs or maybe underneath the knees for some extra support. We want to gently open the body and sometimes um, coming straight into this position can really kind of pull on the inner thigh, the inner groin, the hip flexors. And we don't want a pulling. We just want a gentle opening. So if we need support in order to make that happen today, Let's go ahead and use that. So if we've got the bricks there, we can let them support the legs. If we've got a blanket underneath our knees or our legs, that's great too. If um, we feel like our back is kind of coming away from the earth, let's lift up a little bit, tuck the tail under, maybe even use our hands to move the flesh of our booty away so that the very low back right around the space where our sacrum is, can rest on the floor. And then let's roll the shoulder blades underneath a little bit to support our heart. And then the hands can land anywhere. Maybe we let our hands um, rest on our thighs or maybe on our low belly, kind of that space in between the pubic bone and the um, navel center. That is right where the sacral chakra is. And then just giving ourselves a moment to settle in. So making whatever adjustments we might need, closing the eyes if that feels good, and just starting to bring our awareness to our breath. Letting go of the urge to change or alter the breath in any way. And just for now, let's just be with the breath as it is. Just observing the inhale and the exhale.
And then if our hands are resting on our sacral area, or even if they're not, either way, let's start to imagine an orange light right in between the space, between the base of the spine and the navel center. In our low abdominal area, right in between the hips. And we'll let that orange glowing light kind of warm up that area. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> if our knees are out to the sides, we'll use our hands to gently guide the knees back towards the ceiling. And if the legs were still extended, let's go ahead and bend the knees. We'll bring the feet about hips width apart. We might even take a brick or a book and bring it in between the knees just for a little bit of added stability and um, structure, especially in the inner thigh area <clears throat> so we can have the brick or not and let's walk the feet back a little bit towards our booty up towards our um, base and then we'll roll the shoulders underneath a little bit more on our inhale let's tilt the pelvis down towards the floor so notice that our back kind of moves away from the earth a little bit here and then on the exhale we'll start to Scoop the tailbone under, lifting up, rolling our vertebrae away from the mat one inch at a time. And then inhaling at the top here and exhaling, rolling the spine all the way back down to the floor. So let's do that a few more times. Inhaling, tilting the pelvis down, almost as if we were um, angling our belly button down towards the floor or our pubic bone down towards the floor. So that's a tilt. And then on the inhale, let's tuck the pelvis, roll the spine one inch, one vertebra at a time, all the way up. When we get to the top, we'll take an inhale here, and then exhaling, rolling the spine down, one vertebra at a time. Let's do this a few more times with our own breath at our own pace. So the sacral chakra is uh, rules over the element of water. So we'll do some flowing movements today to kind of uh, mimic the flow of water. And of course, the, our bodies are made up of mostly water. So as we move through these flowing movements, we kind of help to rock the water that's inside of us, the fluids that are in our body. So we'll just keep flowing here a couple more times. If we want a little bit more, we can incorporate the arms. So on our next inhale, we'll tilt uh, the pelvis down, exhaling, tucking under. And as the hips lift, we'll take the arms off of the floor, bringing them up overhead. And then as we exhale, let's see if we can match the pace of the arms with the hips so that both touch the earth at the same time. Inhaling, lifting the hips, arms come up overhead. And then on the exhale, hands come back by our sides as the hips reach the floor. We'll do two more times just like this at our own pace <clears throat> with our own breath. And as always, just a reminder that we are in control of our own practice. So we get to choose the options that feel best in our body today. If there's something that doesn't feel good, please modify or just don't do it at all. And I'll try to offer lots of options so that we can choose the one that feels best in our body right here, right now. So the next time the hips and the arms land, let's pause there for a moment. And then we'll hug the knees in towards the chest, maybe rocking from side to side, maybe even making some circles. So rotating our knees, we can go in a counterclockwise direction to start with. Kind of unwinding the sacral chakra center here. So chakras are energy centers that are aligned with our spine. And Western science has supported the 
theory or fact, I suppose, let's um, switch and go the second way, so clockwise direction. And uh, Western science has supported the reality that we have these chakra centers in the form of nerve bundles. So there are different nerve bundles along the spine, and each one has a different frequency that they resonate at. So let's go ahead and release our feet. We'll bring our feet back down to the mat. And um, let's go ahead and walk the feet about as wide as the mat and just kind of windshield wiper our legs from side to side, taking our time, inhaling, drawing the knees up, exhaling over to one side and then the other. Just starting to open up the hips, the low back, noticing whatever sensation we feel here letting go of judgment, letting go of expectation. We'll do one more on each side, just so we feel nice and even. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then let's bring the knees back to center. We can hold the legs uh, into the chest once again. And then let's rock gently back and forth along the length of the spine. If this doesn't feel good for any reason, we can just rock gently from side to side. And then eventually we'll rock and roll all the way up into a seated position, or we can just uh, roll to one side and press ourselves up. So let's go ahead and find a comfortable seated position to start with. <clears throat> and we'll um, move the flesh away from our sitting bones, sitting up nice and tall, lengthening the spine. On our inhale, let's sweep the arms up. On the exhale, let's take a little twist over towards the right. So left hand outside our right knee, right hand behind us like a kickstand. Belly button drawing uh, lightly in to help twist this around. So we're turning from the inside out, gently looking over that left shoulder. On our inhale, let's sweep the arms up. And then exhaling second side. Right hand outside the left knee, left hand behind us as we gently look over that left shoulder. We'll do one more time on each side. Inhaling, sweeping the arms up. Exhaling, let's take that twist to the right holding just a little bit longer this time. Keep lengthening up through the crown of the head, belly drawing lightly in, shoulders soft. Let's keep the torso where it is, but free the head. So we'll start to turn the head over towards the left shoulder. And then maybe we stay here, or maybe we lower our chin towards our shoulder, just starting to get a little bit into different areas of the neck. Nice, full, deep cycles of breath. On our next inhale, let's lift the head if we looked down, and then we'll sweep our head all the way over to that right shoulder again. Inhaling, arms up. On the exhale, let's bring our right hand down and leaning over towards that right side for a moment. <clears throat> Maybe we're looking down or straight ahead or even up at the sky if that feels okay on the neck. Let's see if we can draw that top shoulder open just a little bit more. And then exhaling, we'll peel that left elbow back, spinning the heart towards the sky, exhaling, rounding in, nose towards knee. Good, two more times just like that. Inhaling, opening the heart, looking up, exhaling, rounding over. Last one, inhaling, opening the heart, opening the shoulder, exhaling, rounding in. Let's pause for a breath or two here, just letting go of the head and neck, softening the shoulders, anchoring down through the sitting bones. We might feel a little opening in the low back. Let's take the breath into the back body. Breathing, low back, mid back, upper back. Good, on our next inhale, we'll sweep the arms up. On the exhale, let's bring the palms together, drawing the hands down through the heart space. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and release our hands, blink the eyes open if they close, inhaling, arms up, exhaling, we'll explore that twist on the second side. So right hand outside the left knee, spinning our torso towards the left. Doesn't have to be the deepest twist of our life. We're still in the warming up phase of our practice, so being gentle with ourselves, letting go of any over-efforting. Softening the shoulders, the eyes, the jaw. 
And let's keep the torso here, but we'll free the head. Swiveling the head over towards the right shoulder and then maybe angling our gaze down towards the earth or our knee. Breathing into any sensations that we feel along the neck, the shoulders, or anywhere else that we feel sensation. On our inhale, let's lift the gaze and we'll turn our head all the way back over towards that left shoulder. Let's inhale the arms up. On the exhale, left hand to the mat, leaning over towards that left side. We'll draw the shoulder back a little bit, spinning our heart towards the ceiling, and then anything that feels good to the, for the neck, maybe looking down, straight ahead, or up underneath our bicep. Good, let's inhale, or excuse me, exhale, we'll peel our right elbow back a little, spinning the heart towards the sky a bit more, and then exhaling, rounding over. Good, two more times, inhaling, opening up, exhaling, rounding, hugging in. Last one, inhaling, opening the heart, twisting from the waist, and then exhaling, rounding in. We'll pause here for a moment. Letting go of the head and neck, Softening the jaw, creating space between the teeth. Staying rooted in that right sitting bone. Let's take the breath into the back body, filling up the back of the lungs. Good, and then inhaling, we'll come all the way back up. Let's sweep the arms up, palms together, exhaling, hands to our heart center. We'll bow the chin towards the chest. Just pausing for a moment. Let's keep the chin down, the chest lifted, releasing our hands. We'll cradle our right, uh, the back of our right hand in the palm of our left hand, and then allow the tips of the thumbs to gently touch each other. Let's keep those shoulders melting down the spine. Feel the midline, midline of the body as we gently hug in towards our spine, sitting tall, yet bowing the chin in, chest lifted, shoulders soft. Feel the internal support and then invite a gentle softening around that. So this mudra, this hand gesture corresponds to the sacral chakra, we're here for one more cycle of breath. Good, let's go ahead and release our hands. We'll lift the chin, blink the eyes open, and let's transition into uh, all fours on our mat. So we'll bring the hands directly underneath the shoulders, the knees directly underneath the hips. Let's spread the fingers nice and wide, creating little starfish hands on our mat, pressing the palms down, even gripping the floor with our finger pads. So we might feel a little lift of the palm, helping to stabilize and root down through our hands. On an inhale, let's lift the heart, lift the tailbone, coming into cow pose. And then on our exhale, let's round the spine, tucking chin towards chest as we scoop the tailbone under. So let's do that a couple more times. Inhaling to open the heart, lift the tailbone. Exhaling, rounding the spine. Good. Let's move with our breath at our own pace a couple more times, just rolling along the spine. Just for today, We'll think about moving from our sacral chakra as the center point. So think about those low abdominal muscles and initiate the movement from there. Noticing the gentle contraction as we exhale and round in. And noticing the supported release as we soften those muscles down towards the earth, opening the front of the body. <clears throat> Good. <laughs> So again, connecting with that watery quality of the sacral chakra. And this will be the last time here. So last one, rounding the spine. And on our next inhale, let's come to a neutral spine. We'll bring the knees just a little bit closer together. And then let's take our left leg out to the side, <clears throat> lifting our knee, inseam of our pants, 
parallel to the floor, and then exhaling, releasing. Let's do that a couple more times. Lifting that leg up and out, feel the outer hip working, and then releasing the knee back down. So as we lift up and out, think dog and fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. So our foot is reaching back, uh, facing back towards the wall behind. Good, feel that outer hip working, strengthening here. Good work. And let's see if we can keep our weight evenly distributed between the hands and that knee that's still down on the ground. So the tendency is when that leg lifts up and out to the side that we kind of collapse into the other side of the body. Let's see if we can resist that. The next time that left knee lifts up and out, let's create some circles here. So we'll keep that leg lifted and just create some gentle circles in one direction. And then let's reverse and go the second way. So circular motions help to bring synovial fluid into the joint, helping to lubricate the joints so that they move a little bit more gently. Let's return that knee back down to the earth, and then we'll step that left foot forward in between the hands. So here's a good place if we need bricks or books, we can grab them. Let's make sure that left knee is right on top of the left ankle, and then we'll wiggle our left, or excuse me, our right knee back a little bit more. So we don't want to be straight up and down on that back kneecap. That's really hard on the knee. Instead, we want to kind of be more towards the top of the patella, the top of the kneecap, or the very bottom of our femur bone. So let's um, bring a gentle hugging sensation into the legs, hugging the front foot forward, the back knee in, so that we create a little stability in the pelvis here. From that stability, let's see if we can soften. So it's both and. We're not just collapsing into the innate flexibility of our joints, and we're also not over-efforting. So there's a, a gentle softening into the stability, into the support. Good. Let's keep the shoulders lifted, the heart lifted, excuse me, shoulders melting. And then we'll inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead. Let's see if we can get the biceps right beside the ears. Keep lifting the heart, melting the hips. We'll flip the right palm up towards the sky. Big inhale here. On the exhale, let's lean over towards the left. Little balance challenge here as well as we open up that right hip flexor. On our inhale, let's come back to center. Exhale, both hands down to the mat. So let's walk that left foot over towards the left um, edge of our mat a little bit and we'll angle our toes towards the left corner. Let's bring both hands inside that front leg. And here we might wanna have hands on the mat or we might wanna grab a brick or a book. So we'll inhale, lifting the heart. Let's draw the heart forward, lengthening the spine. On the exhale, softening the space in between the shoulder blades. So maybe this is our pose. Maybe we stay right here with the hands on the earth. If we need more, we can maybe bring our forearms down to a book, or maybe we bring the forearms down directly onto the floor. So choosing the option that feels best in our body today. Softening the space in between the shoulder blades. No matter how far down our torso comes towards the earth, let's see if we can keep the upper body soft. So releasing the tension out of the shoulders, out of the neck, out of the jaw, maybe we gently rock back and forth in the hip here. So the hips and the sacral chakra are responsible for or rule over playtime, so a sense of playfulness, our creativity. The hips are often described as the storage house of emotions. So when we work the hips, sometimes we can be surprised by different emotions that come up. And if that happens for us during practice today, just know that that's normal. As things come up, it means they're ready to be released. So softening into those edges. Let's go ahead and inhale, coming back up to our um, palms and we'll bend the back knee. So a couple options today. Maybe we stay right here with the knee bent and just energetically draw the heel in towards our booty or we can bring our right hand to the floor, angle the fingers out a little bit, and reach our left hand back. Now maybe we just energetically reach, that's okay. We're still um, sending the signal. Our brain doesn't know the difference. Our brain thinks that we're holding our foot. It's, 
it doesn't know. Otherwise, if it's available, we can physically hold on to that ankle or the top of the foot. If we've got the foot softening the shoulders, let's see if we can melt the hips a little bit more. Notice the back bend that happens here. Last breath. Let's go ahead and release the foot and we'll walk the hands back in. Let's walk that left foot back towards the center. And on our exhale, we'll take the hips back towards the wall behind us, moving into a little hamstring stretch here. So let's tuck that left hip in and down. As we draw the heel of our left foot down into the floor and then energetically in towards our body. Feel an integration of this extended leg into the torso. On our inhale, let's come forward into that lunge. And then on the exhale, we'll make our way back into that hamstring stretch once again. Let's inhale, just lift the heart. Exhale, melting the heart down, maybe softening the forehead towards the leg a little bit, any amount here. Keeping the toes spread. Let's start to pink, uh, drop our pinky toe down towards the floor. Now it probably won't touch and that's okay. We wanna keep the activity in our foot, keep that hugging in feeling of the uh, hip, or excuse me, the leg, integrating into that hip socket. Notice the sensation probably on the outside of the leg here as we stretch the IT band. If we want more, we can take our hands over towards that left side, keep melting the heart, softening the gaze, soft jaw. This can be pretty intense, so breathing, sending the breath into those tight, fiery places. Good, on our next inhale, Let's come back into our um, lunge position and we'll transition back into all fours. So anything that feels good here, if we wanna move the spine, we can choose cat and cow, we can make some circles with the spine, or if we need a moment, we can rest in child's pose. Big toes come together at the back of the mat, widening the knees towards the long edges of our mat, softening our heart. We can have the arms extended or we can rest our forehead on our fists like I'm doing here. And just spending a moment to rest or if we're moving, continuing to move in a way that feels good. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and make our way back into all fours if we're not there already. And um, I'm gonna turn the other way because the wall is there. So we're gonna work on the left side, or excuse me, the right side a little bit now. So let's spread the fingers nice and wide, really rooting down, especially between the first finger and the thumb. And then inhaling, lifting that right leg up and out, exhaling, returning down. Let's do that a few more times. Feel that outer hip working, the right glute engaging, strengthening the hips here. <laughs> Never mind the beasts running around through the house. All right, good work. A gentle lift up of the belly button. So keeping the lower back nice and straight, tilting the, uh, tucking the pelvis under, scooping the pelvis under. Good. And then the next time that right hip lifts, or the right leg lifts up and out, let's create some circles here. Gentle engagement of the low abs, supporting, and we'll reverse and go the second way. Good. Beautiful, let's return that knee back down towards the mat and we'll step the foot forward in between the hands, making our way into that uh, low lunge position. So right knee on top of right ankle, let's walk the left leg back a little bit. So we've got a nice deep angle on that left leg. So scissoring the legs gently in towards each other. Maybe we've got bricks or books or maybe fingertips can touch the earth. Keep scooping the tailbone, feel the heart lifting, melting the hips towards the earth. Find that engaged surrender here. So we're still supporting the pelvic floor with a gentle hugging in of the legs, so the front heel kind of hugs in towards the body, 
the back knee hugs in towards the body. And from that supported, lifted place, we can soften into the hips a little more deeply. Keep scooping the tail under, shoulders stacking over the hips. Notice there's a little back bend happening here. Doesn't have to be super deep. And then let's go ahead and return, releasing the hands to the earth. Both hands inside that front foot. We'll walk the front foot towards the right corner of the mat a little more. Let's angle the toes out towards the corner. Inhale, lengthening the spine. Exhaling, melting the heart. Maybe staying right here or maybe lowering down to the forearms, either on a book or on the floor itself. We can rock gently if that feels good, or we can stay in stillness. So any angle on those toes that help to protect the knee. When we angle the foot out a little bit, it kind of relieves the pressure there. So just finding the place that feels best for the knee, best for the ankle, and letting the hips melt towards the floor. Let's keep a gentle hugging in of that right knee. So sometimes it kind of falls out to the side, but just for today, let's see if we can kind of hug that knee in towards the body a little bit. Softening the space between the shoulders, softening the skin between the eyebrows. And maybe even saying an affirmation to ourselves here. It can be something along the lines of, I allow my creativity to flow freely. Or if other words resonate more with you, choose those. On our next inhale, let's go ahead and release that. <clears throat> We'll walk our right foot towards the middle of our mat a little bit more, and on our exhale, let's turn the toes up towards the sky as we take the hips back towards the wall behind us and bow in. Ardha Hanumanasana, hamstring stretch. Let's inhale, coming forward into our lunge once again, and then exhale, take those hips back towards the wall behind and bow in. So there's a teeny tiny lift up of the pelvis, kind of like a cat pose, or excuse me, a cow pose, a lift up of the pelvis. Inhale, lifting our heart, exhaling, folding in. Belly drawing lightly in and up, spreading the toes, pressing that heel down into the earth, and then energetically drawing that leg into the socket. Now notice this right hip kind of lifts up a little bit, so let's wrap that hip in and down. Stretching through both sides of the legs, so pressing through the big toe mound and the pinky toe mound equally. Good. Let's keep that engagement in the leg and start to karate chop our pinky toe down towards the earth. It probably won't touch. That's okay. And then if we want more, we can walk our hands over towards that right side. Deepening into the sensation in that hip flexor, or excuse me, in the IT band. This can be a sensitive area, so nice full deep breaths here. Softening the jaw. Good, let's go ahead and release. We'll inhale, coming back into our lunge, and then exhaling, walking the foot out to the side, making our way back into all fours. Let's move the spine a little bit, or find child's pose, anything that feels good here. Beautiful. If we're not there yet, let's go ahead and come back to our all fours, tabletop pose. If downward facing dog is in our practice, we're going to move there in a moment. If it is not, then we'll um, come to a standing position in whatever way makes sense to us. So if we're moving into down dog, let's take our palms forward just a little bit, maybe about half a hand span ahead of our shoulders, curling the toes under. Engaging the low abs, so feel a lifting, supported sensation there. And then inhaling, full deep breath. Exhaling, lifting the hips, drawing the chest towards the thighs as we press the hands away and down. 
and then let's bicycle our feet here, just walking our dog a couple of moments, a couple of breaths, releasing the calves, the hamstrings, the hips. And then with bent knees or straight legs, let's walk towards our hands, coming into a forward fold, letting go of the head and neck, just for today, let's keep our hands supported on something, whether we're touching the floor or our books, or maybe we're resting our hands on our legs, but let's support our back by resting our hands somewhere. Weight evenly distributed around the feet. Let's see if we can let go of the head and neck just a little more, crown of the head dripping down towards the earth, maybe even gently shaking the head yes and no to release the neck. And then inhaling, halfway lifting, belly draws in, lower ribs draw in, crown of the head reaching forward, exhaling, folding. Two more times just like that, inhaling, lifting halfway, maybe hands are on our shins, little micro bend in our knees, exhaling, folding in. Last one, inhaling, softening the shoulders away from the ears, Belly drawing in, low ribs drawing in, back nice and flat, chin lightly tucked to stay long in the cervical spine, exhaling, folding. Good, let's bring our hands to our hips, hug the elbows in, pressing strongly through the feet, rising all the way up, coming into mountain pose. Pausing for a moment here, letting our body come back to equilibrium. I know I always get a head rush when I come from forward fold. So just giving ourselves a moment to stabilize. And then we'll blink the eyes open. And um, let's take a nice wide stance on our mat. So we'll turn towards the long edge of our mat. Toes facing the corners. <clears throat> let's inhale the arms up. On the exhale, bending the knees out over the toes, hugging the elbows in towards our waist. Inhaling, pressing through the feet to rise. Exhaling, hugging elbows in, knees out. Two more times just like that. Feeling the shoulder blades moving up and down. Feel the strength and power in the lower body. Good. Beautiful. And then let's bend the knees. We'll bring the hands to the thighs for some support. Pressing the knees gently open towards the pinky toe. Imagining like there's a wall behind us. We want to touch the outer part of our leg to that wall. Let's keep tucking the tailbone under, and then we'll just make some circles here. So a couple times in one direction, and then let's reverse and go the second way. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Just imagining like we're stirring up the energy in our sacrum. Good, last one. Let's go ahead and release the legs. And we will um, turn our left toes towards the little edge of our mat. Let's kick the right heel out and angle the right toes in. Uh, let's bring our hands on our hips for a moment. We're gonna draw the right hip down as the left hip lifts gently up. So we're leveling the hips here. And then let's Hug the legs in, so really feel an integration of the legs into the body, softening the upper body. Keeping that integration, that hugging in, let's bend the left knee and draw that knee open towards our pinky toe. So we should be able to look down and see our big toe. Inhaling, drawing the arms up. Exhaling, sinking in, maybe one inch lower for warrior two. Virabhadrasana B, warrior two. Softening the shoulders, softening the gaze as we look out over the middle finger of the left hand. Good, and then let's release the legs, release the hands. We'll turn our toes to switch to the other direction. So right toes towards the little edge of our mat. Let's angle our left foot. So we want this back hip to kind of turn in and under a little. If our toes are out too far, then we can't do that. It kind of prevents us from spinning that hip in and down. Good. So let's bring our hands to our hips, anchoring down on that left hip. Notice as we release that left hip down, we get really strong in this left leg. 
<clears throat> we want to keep that. And then leveling the hips, the right hip might lift up a little, exhaling, bending into that right knee. Let's keep scooping the tailbone in and down, softening the shoulders, and then bringing the arms up to shoulder level, reaching through the fingertips, big breath. On the exhale, sinking in, maybe one inch lower, looking out gently over the middle finger of the right hand, knee peeling open towards our pinky toe. Good, let's release our arms, release the legs. We'll walk the feet together, heel toes, heel toes, heel toes. Beautiful. So let's come to a <clears throat> mountain pose in the middle of our mat. We're gonna do a balancing posture. So if we'd like to use the wall for support or if we have um, a chair or the couch or a table near us, whatever it is we might need for some balance support, we're welcome to it. So let's start with um, mountain, mountain pose. Toes facing forward, feet parallel, right underneath the hips. Let's roll the shoulders back and down. Feel the heart slightly elevate. So not too, not too crazy. Keep drawing the bottom ribs in and down, but there is a tiny little elevation of the heart when we start to fold the shoulder blades onto the back. Good, reaching up through the crown of the head. Tadasana, mountain pose. And then let's shift the weight slightly over towards the left foot. We'll lift the right foot away from the mat. So today we can either hold the back of the thigh if that feels best and most supportive, or we can challenge our balance a little more by keeping um, the hands free. So notice that right hip wants to hike up. We're gonna release it down towards the floor. Maybe hands come to heart center. Maybe this knee stays bent, or we might practice lengthening that leg out in front of us. Keep integrating the leg into the hip socket, even as we press out through the bottom of the foot. Shaking is okay. Let's re-bend the knee. This time we will hold um, underneath that thigh, hold uh, left hand on our left hip, and then let's start to open that right hip out to the side. Spreading the toes, keep that foot active. Keep drawing or pressing down through the standing leg to lift up through the crown of the head. Good. And then last one, we're gonna cross our ankle over the leg and our left leg and let that right knee kind of fall um, open to the side. So I use that term fall open kind of loosely because we wanna keep some uh, support here. We're not just letting it flop open, but there's still strength and power in our standing leg, there's strength and power in this bent knee as well. Maybe hands to heart center. Maybe we start to take our hips, our sitting bones back towards the wall behind us. Front knee stays behind our toes to protect the knee. Heart lifting, shoulders melting. If we're falling over, that's okay. Last breath here. Good, and then pressing through the foot, let's release both feet to the mat and take a moment, just pause in mountain pose for a breath. Let's take a cleansing breath, in through the nose, open mouth, exhale. Good, just feeling what we feel, noticing what we notice, letting go of judgment, letting go of expectation, and then blinking the eyes open, second side. So let's find mountain pose again, toes facing forward. Sometimes when we do balancing postures, we don't even realize it, but we kind of kick our foot out to the side for extra balance. But that kind of, that messes up our, um, our alignment. So we want to keep the alignment today, toes facing forward. And then let's shift the weight slightly to the right foot, hands on our hips. We'll lift that left knee up and then anchor that left hip down. Good. Maybe we hold behind the back of the leg. Keep scooping the tail towards our heel of our standing leg. Lengthening up through the crown. Good, rooting down to rise up. And then maybe hands on hips. Maybe we start to lengthen the left leg out towards the wall in front. Keep anchoring the left hip down. One more breath. Good, and then let's bend the knee. 
and then we can take that left hip out towards the left thigh. Super strong on the right side of the body, spreading the toes, staying active in that left foot. Beautiful, let's return that knee in and we'll cross the left ankle over the standing right leg, opening up that knee, that left knee out towards the left. So we're still pressing our hips gently forward, lengthening through the crown of the head. Maybe we stay right here, maybe this is our pose. Maybe hands to heart center, maybe sitting back as if we're sitting into a chair. Standing figure four. Standing knee behind the toes to protect that knee joint. And then let's press through the right foot, coming up, releasing. Good, we'll shake it out a little bit. Beautiful, let's come back to mountain pose, Tadasana. We'll take another cleansing breath in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale, letting it go. Beautiful, so if downward dog is in our practice, we can inhale, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, practicing the arms or arms out to the side as we fold in. And then we'll step back into downward facing dog. If we prefer to just come into a seated position, we can make our way there now. If we're in down dog, let's bring the knees to the mat and we'll sit onto our mat. Um, let's kind of come towards the middle here. So we've got some room. <clears throat> And then uh, we'll extend the arms forward. Let's plug the shoulders into the socket. Tilt the chin or tuck the chin in towards the chest. Let's scoop the tailbone under and we're gonna roll down one vertebra at a time. So a little bit of core strengthening here. Keep tucking the chin towards the chest. That's the hardest part. Rolling down, flattening one vertebra into the spine or into the floor after the another after another wow that was a hard sentence for some reason all right good celebrating that we've made it to the floor Let's take a cleansing breath here in through the nose open mouth exhale good so we'll find that figure four laying down this time so let's cross the right ankle over the left knee and just without using our hands today let's press that knee away so we'll spark up the right foot spreading the toes pressing through the ball and the heel and then energetically pressing that right knee away from us maybe we stay right here or if we want more we can lift the left leg hugging that knee in towards our chest we'll keep tilting the tailbone towards the floor. So keep, maintain that little space between the low back and the earth. And we might need a strap for this because sometimes when we incorporate that tilt, it kind of pulls on our upper body. So if we have a strap or if we have a, a belt or something, we can loop that around the back of our leg and that way we can soften the upper body a little bit more and still deepen into the stretch in the low body. Last breath here. Good. Let's keep the legs as they are, um, but we'll bring the left foot down to the floor just so we can kind of bump the hips over towards the right. And then let's let the legs fall over towards the left. For today, we'll let that right foot come down to the floor. So the bottom of our foot is pressing on the floor. Let's keep pressing that right knee towards the little edge of our mat and if we need more we can walk our left knee in a little bit more kind of deepening into that outer hip on the right side so if we want we can cactus the arms maybe even turning our gaze over towards our right side getting a nice spinal twist here as we open that outer hip we're both strengthening and uh, increasing flexibility here by keeping that foot on the floor there's some little bit of activity that needs to happen and we're also opening up that outer hip so let's go ahead and release that we'll inhale bringing the legs all the way back up let's extend the left leg forward we'll hug the right knee in towards the chest 
let's stay active in both feet, almost like we were pressing our left foot into a wall. Softening the shoulders, using the bicep strength, the arm strength to hug that right knee in. Inviting some compression in that right hip flexor. Good. And then let's go ahead and release that. We're going to bring our right arm inside the right leg, holding the pinky toe side edge of our foot. Let's keep the right foot up towards the sky and then let gravity gently draw that right knee towards the earth. Half happy baby. Left hand can be resting on our left thigh or left hip. That's a gentle reminder for that leg to stay connected to the floor. So if we feel ourselves kind of rolling over, we can recommit to anchoring that leg down. Softening the jaw, softening the upper body, releasing into the mat. Let's go ahead and release the right leg. We'll bring both legs up into the sky and just notice for a moment. My right leg feels a lot longer than my left leg all of a sudden. So just notice what feels alive for you. Maybe one leg has a temperature difference from the other, or maybe one feels tingly and the other one doesn't. Just notice. And then let's bend the knees, both feet to the mat. We'll cross that right, uh, left ankle over the right thigh. And then let's spread the toes, press through the ball and the heel of the foot, like we were gonna walk on the side of the wall here. And then energetically press that left knee away from us. So without using the hands today, just using the strength of our left hip. Good, either staying here or if we need more, we can hug the right knee towards the chest. Maybe we grab a strap or a belt to help with this part of the pose. Let's keep tilting the tailbone down towards the floor and then softening the upper body. Even if we're holding onto a strap, let's see if we can soften our grip, soften our arms, letting the elbows rest towards the floor, letting the shoulder blades soften. Good. And then let's go ahead and release the right foot down just to give us a little bit of leverage to bump our hips over towards the left. And then we'll let the feet or the legs drop over to the right. So right leg on the floor, left foot on the floor. And if we need more, we can walk that right leg up a little bit. Maybe looking out over the left fingertips. Let's see if we can soften the shoulders down towards the mat. So we might even need to kind of wiggle that right shoulder out from underneath us so that both shoulder blades are down on the floor. And then let's keep actively pressing that left knee towards the little edge of our mat. Might. Turn our head, maybe some deep breaths here. Where can we soften? Where can we let go even a little bit? Good, let's go ahead and bring our head back to center. We'll bring the knees back to center as well. Let's reposition our hips so they're nice and even. And then hugging both knees in towards our chest, let's send the right leg out long. We'll keep squeezing that left knee in towards our underarm. Let's stay active in the feet, soft in the shoulders, using our upper body, our arm strength to squeeze that leg in, getting some nice compression in that hip, squeezing out the old fluid so that new fluid can rush in, bringing new nutrients, new oxygen, new blood. Let's release the knee. We'll bring the left arm inside the left leg, holding the outside edge of our foot or maybe the ankle or our pant leg, whatever's available. Let's keep anchoring down through that right leg, that right side, left bottom of foot up towards the ceiling, 
gravity gently drawing that left knee towards the earth. So inviting a sense of playfulness here in our posture. In half happy baby, we might rock gently. Maybe we find this kind of a funny pose. We might laugh. Our sacral chakra, the root of our creativity, the root of our sexuality, the root of playfulness, our sense of feeling connected to our creativity. Good, last breath here. And let's go ahead and release that leg. We'll extend both legs up towards the sky once again. If we want full happy baby, that's available to us. And even bigger invitation to feel playful and funny in our pose. Or if we just want to keep the legs lifted towards the ceiling, that's available too. Either way, a gentle inversion to reverse the flow of the blood just for a couple of breaths. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and bend the knees in towards the chest once again. We'll bring our feet to the floor and then let's make our way into our final relaxation. If we want to end the, po the class, our practice, the same way we began, we can bring the bottoms of the feet together, roll the shoulder blades under, move the flesh away from our booty and um, keep and come into our Shavasana via um, laying down butterfly. If we wish to go into traditional Shavasana, we can extend the legs, let the feet flop open, we'll roll the shoulders under a little more deeply. Let's rest on the back of the head so that there's space around the neck, the chin. We can rest our knuckles, our hands on that second knuckle so that the palms are spinning up. Shoulder blades melting away from the ears. And let's just take a few moments here in our Shavasana, our most important pose of our entire practice. The posture where we get to let go of absolutely everything and just be. The posture of ultimate release and receptivity. Shavasana. If you wish to remain in your Shavasana a bit longer, please do. If you'd like to end practice, 
Simply start to wiggle the fingers and the toes, starting to whisper a gentle movement back into the extremities. When we're, you're ready for more, maybe circling wrists and ankles. Maybe taking a full body stretch. Extending the arms over your head, the feet forward, letting the back arch away from the earth. And when you're ready, bending both knees, gently rolling over to your favorite side, pausing here for a breath. Maybe even imagining that orange glow once again, originating from that space between the base of the spine and the navel center. With as little effort as possible, pressing your way up into seated position, sitting tall with a straight spine, let's find that mudra again where we place the back of the right hand into the palm of the left, allowing the thumbs to lightly touch each other at the tip. We'll end our practice with the sound of the sacral chakra, which is VAM, V-A-M. Let's take a cleansing breath first, inhaling through the nose, exhaling open mouths. Good, inhaling to VAM. VAM. Bowing the chin towards the chest, we might wish to, re to unite the hands together in front of the heart space. Feeling a sense of gratitude for this opportunity to move our bodies, to be on our mat, to be in community, even though it looks different. May our yoga practice be an opportunity for us to be playful, to be creative, and to bring that forward into our lives off of our mat as well. Thank you all so much for coming to practice today. Thank you for practicing yoga. Namaste. Good work. Questions, comments, concerns, interpretive dances. You can find me at melamina.com or email me directly at melamina at melamina.com. All right. Have a wonderful day and I hope to connect with you soon. Bye. And I remember I said I would show the carnelian. So this is the carnelian piece that I have. And the scent that I used today was wild orange. All right, see you soon. I'm Joe.